So working with vectors in Rn, or any vector space for that matter, that we've introduced vector spaces, um, we very often want to talk about the basis of that vector space. Um, so that means it's a collection of, say for Rn, it's a collection of n vectors, so here we've labeled them, b1 through bn, where any other vector in the space, in this case Rn, can be written as a unique linear combination of these basis vectors. And so sometimes this is a kind of non-constructive definition and it doesn't always help to think of it this way. This is also another version right here in this problem. It's called linear independence of vectors. And basically what we're going to do is prove it. So the, the statement itself is, if given any basis, say b1 through bn of rn, if you can find scalars t1 through tn in r such that t1 times b1 plus dot, 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 all these, uh, t sub n bn equals zero, then all these constants had to be actually equal to zero. So it basically gives, um, it, it reiterates the statement that zero has a unique expression in terms of the basis vectors. And we're going to exploit this fact in the, the actual proof. So let's get a little bit of room here. So the method that we're going to prove this by is something called proof by contradiction. Um, basically says, we want to prove something. What hypothesis, hypotheses do we have? If we assume that those are false, we get a contradiction. So what we want to assume is that there exist these scalars such that uh, the linear combination of all those with the basis elements is equal to zero. Then all the, all the scalars had to actually be, in fact, zero. So what we're going to assume is, what happens if those scalars are not all zero? So that means without, just, without loss of generality, at least one of them is non-zero. And to simplify the expression, or the method of proof, we can just assume the first one is non-zero. The case is really the same thing if you choose any one of them. So we assume t1 is not equal to zero. OK, so we're going to exploit the fact that a basis gives a unique expression in, in terms of a linear combination of the other basis elements. So since t1 is not equal to 0, we can write, well, b1 can be written. Look, it's a vector in the vector space, so perfectly legitimate. It can be written as 1 times b1 plus 0 times b2 dot, 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 plus 0 times bn. However, since we have that t1, b1 plus dot, 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 plus tn, bn is equal to 0, we can move t1, b1 to the other side and divide by t1 because it's not 0 by assumption here. So we get b1 is equal to minus t2 divided by t1, b2, plus dot, 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 oh, sorry, minus tn over t1, bn. So now we have two different expressions of b1, sorry, for b1, in terms of the basis elements. But this is a contradiction because we assumed, or sorry, that the definition of a basis means that every element in the vector space has a unique expression in terms of the other basis elements. So since it's a contradiction, our initial assumption that all the t1s were not equal to 0 was false. So the fact follows now that they all must actually be equal to zero and the claim follows.